shot at the back of my house by Steiger. I'm not sure. That's studio stuff. This is the, the, the George Platt. What the hell is this? When they had their... What the hell did they call And it would depend. Uh, she was not a very good stage actress, but she was a brilliant movie actor. And that writer's cramp, leave me alone. You're a very handsome man. What do you do? Well, um, I've been an illustrator. Thank you, first of all, for the compliment. <laughs> I'm sorry, that took me by surprise. I've been an illustrator for many years. What does that mean? I brought a copy of my book. I thought I could show you this. It would be easier. These are some of my drawings. Ah. What does Dreamer mean? Well, Dreamer was just, this was just a collection of my drawings from published, from my published drawings. And they wanted me to come up with a name that summarized my work the best. And I just thought the name Dreamer seemed um, appropriate. And um, this was published a few years ago. And, Who published it? Um, Viking Penguin. Published, huh? Viking Penguin published it here in the United States. And it was published in Japan as well by um, a, a, a Japanese publisher. Your drawings of the guys proves you're gay. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just want to you a giveaway. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> right. <laughs> I just watched Street Scene last night. Huh? I just watched your movie Street Scene last night. Where did you see it? Well, I, I, I got a copy of it to watch. It was on video. I have a copy of it. Anybody with a copy of it was a revelation to me. It In is, what way? It seemed very contemporary to me. Really? Yes, it seemed very um, experimental, and um, your performance was extraordinarily fresh. I mean, it, you, you, there, there did not seem to be a, an instant of the kind of affectation that you can associate with. Film performance well, that from that period. From the theater. Well, you were, you were wonderful in it. You were heartbreaking in that movie from the very. Mm -hmm. Well, you, you just. How to say this? I'm not, I'm, I'm blathering here, and I. That's all right. Um, Get I, that all out so you feel comfortable. Okay. I was familiar with your work, your as an older actress. I had seen you in an early Frost. I had seen you on TV and in movies Beetlejuice. I was good in early Frost. You were incredible yeah. in early <laughs> Frost. Was that... Now, I'll, I'll tell you why I say that, Ira. Because, one, I had a director that I adored. And uh, working with uh, Jenna was wonderful. Because at one shot, I think we look alike. Yeah, you really do the make eyes believable like mother-daughter. And I loved working with Ben Gazzara. I thought he was the best one in it, really, as a performance. Because this was the toughest role. Sure. Because it, it was not sympathetic for the longest time. But to me, he was very sympathetic. Sure. Because I understood the man who carried, who carried all the athletic trophies. Sure. And then finds out his son is gay. Right. And it, it was the most difficult role in the whole show. Well, it, play. it had a great, the, his son had so much to do with his own self-image. And, and I happen to love Ben Gazzara. Sure. I love his kind of actor because he's, he's so much like Luther, it's ridiculous. <laughs> well, Luther Adler, sure. my, uh, one, one of my husbands. <laughs> well, I, I had knew you as an older actress and had always loved your work because you, you First of all, you're just a terrific actress, and, and but I wasn't aware. I knew, I'd seen films as I'd seen Dead End, and I'd seen the, the Saboteur, the one you did with Hitchcock. I sabotage. Had, yes, ta sabotage. Sabotage. Ta sabotage. And but I had never seen Street Scene until last night when I got it from, and I was I was transfixed. I watched parts of it over and over again. It I thought was one of the most amazing movies of that period I've ever seen where things would go from a small two-shot, and then suddenly... Well, don't forget, it was directed by a film director. King, King Vidor. King Vidor, yeah. Right. Uh, and I think it was the first time he ever directed a talking film. Wow. 
The one thing that has amazed me, Ira, there's been a whole thing on AMC, I think, about films, 100 films. Uh, From the AFI. Not, yeah. You know, not one Goldwyn film is in that list. And he was one of the best producers that ever happened. Why do you suppose that is? Huh? Why do you suppose that is? Is there some sort of backlash? Who knows who, how the AMC votes. Right. Wow. That, is, that does seem like a, a real glaring omission. Well, he, I, the, the, the films he produced are just extraordinary. Yes. What about Bud Schulberg? What about him? Was any of his, how many films was his mentioned? What? Schulberg. Any of his films mentioned? But In the Schulberg yeah. is Schulberg's son. Oh, really? Well, I don't know. Any Bud Schulberg is younger than I am. No, he may be Pete. a year or two older. It was B.P. Schulberg. That's what I meant. Producer. Right. Get your facts straight. <laughs> what are you doing with that piece of shit? I'm holding it. Put it back down. Okay. Put it on the floor. I, I know what you're saying, but I the minute I looked at it, that the was... The difference here, the whole damn thing, it's not a bit. Well, I'm sure looking at your own face... Except it's, it's young. That's well, young. <laughs> and very beautiful. Very beautiful. That was kind of a part of the revelation for me last night watching Street Scene. I had never realized how drop-dead gorgeous you were. I really didn't. I had seen you. Honey, you know, they always called me the ugly kid. You're kidding. I kid you not. But you're, but you're breathtakingly beautiful in that film and in that photo. See, I was signed because I could speak. Because mm -hmm. I'd been in, on the stage. Yes. I made my first hit on Broadway when I was 16. And suddenly there's... Nobody ever went to... You went to silent movies. Sure. Prater played around the corner from the old Rialto Theater, the Times Square Theater, which I think still is there. Uh, they got stuck suddenly. There's this terrible thing that is recording speech and sure. voices. And they had to get actors. Mm -hmm not people who reacted to right. what might be said on the screen. Right, maybe. Uh, the one contract I jumped, believe it or not, at that time, I was signed by Fox for 1500 a week. And that's in the 30s. That's a ton of money back then, wow. And I jumped the contract because I was very unhappy there. Wow. And they cast me as a villain. Okay, <laughs> with that face, they cast you as a villain. That's right. The sweetest, babe, most beautiful baby <laughs> face in the world, and they want to make you a villain. Go figure. And I never forget the guy who directed with Jack Blystone. Lovely man. And I kept saying, let me know when I'm finished. Let me know when I can go get my last check. Let me know. Mm. And he did. He said, today, go get your check now. So I went and got my check got back to the, we had, my mother and I had an apartment on Havenhurst Drive. In those days, somebody, 16, 17, 18, even 20 years old, girl, never traveled without a chaperone. Right. And so I tell my mother, we can make the chief tonight <laughs> and go right home. She packed the trunk like a crazy lady. We called the car, the rental car, and said, come pick it up <laughs> and be in front of the apartment. <laughs> so you got out of town that very day? We were on the chief at 6 o'clock that Good night. Good gosh. Couldn't wait to get out of there. And unfortunately, when we got home, uh, I had a date for Mayfair, because that was the big Saturday night club for the actors. And my mother lost the keys to the trunk. And I couldn't get my evening. I wanted to kill her. Do you suppose she really lost the keys or she just wanted to keep you home? Oh, no, 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 no. She really lost no, the keys. No, really. To be a member of Mayfair, to have been invited, meant that you had arrived in the theater. Okay. And she was very 
proud of the fact that I had become a member. I think I was the youngest member. When you were in, when you were 16 and on Broadway, were you playing a role younger than yourself, or were you playing? Your my, no, I played my age. Okay, okay. I think the girl was supposed to have been a little older, mm -hmm. but they said, uh, "Stick with that kid; she's right. gonna be good." With the heart-shaped face. Yeah. yeah. They didn't call it heart-shaped heart -shaped face. They said the ugly kid. I don't see how they could the look at that. The ugly kid who can act. I don't see how they could Jesse look at Jesse Lasky it. said, what are we going to do with that ugly kid? Well, check this out, Sylvia. <sighs> There's three pictures to look at, but one of them, I love it. You holding a cigarette in your hand. That's you. I think that's a George Platt Lines, too. I think that was photographed in the garage. Yeah, because no uh, studio would photograph me with a cigarette no. in my hand. So th that was probably your own outfit that you wore that day. Yeah, because there are other pictures that I said with George Pat Lines. Yeah. That have that. Mm -hmm. I know that we photographed that in somebody's garage. I can't remember. You look like you don't have a, a piece of makeup on your face in that photo no, either. No. No. That's the amazing thing is how beautiful you are in those photos with absolutely no makeup on. There was Zim. Was that the your real Mila. dog? What? Was that your dog, your real dog? My, that's a dog my mother and father gave me for my 21st birthday. Oh, jeez. What a beautiful dog that is, too. That was in front of my house on Rock, Roxbury Drive. Oh, God, he was gorgeous. I like the outfit, too. I don't know. Probably Saks with that in you. <laughs> If they thought you were ugly, what did they want in the way of beauty? I can't imagine how Honey, they... Honey, when you look at what was in silent films... Right. Don't pay attention to him. You see, he thinks... I'll pet him once. Which... All right. So they wanted little bee stung lips and... I don't know. We, we, there were people... Well, like Norma Talmadge. Then there was somebody like, a name like, I think Catherine McDonald or mm -hmm. something like that. She was a great, great screen mm -hmm. Connie Talmadge. And they used to say, what are we going to do with that kid, that big mouth? Oh. And the eyes are so far apart. Right. That they complained that my eyes were too far apart. <laughs> Well, see, I consider that a, a, a How are we going to get them together? <laughs> <laughs> That's him. There's Zim. In the film oh. street scene, was there any, um, was that all, all the dialogue scripted, oh. or was there, um, um, I'm trying to think of the word, I just went blank here. Um, did you ad lib any of the dialogue in that? Because no, it's Elder so, Rice was on the set all the time. Because it was so spontaneous, and there was, um, it, it just it just seemed completely real. And as you would be talking, there would be a, a, a double shot of you and an actor talking, all these people walking by the camera, all well, this beautiful um, sense of motion around you. Most of the people <coughs> were in the film, <coughs> outside of me and Buscalia. <coughs> And Estelle Taylor mm -hmm. played the mom. Everybody else was from the original New York cast. Really? Yeah. Eula Bondi and uh, well, she Eula, was wonderful. Bill had made that hit coming down the stairs on uh -huh. stage, I remember. <laughs> the crazy thing is that I was called by Brady, Bill Brady and Elma Rice to come and see them about a play called Street Scene. And I had gotten a little discussion with the theater, and I think I did five plays in the season. Well, that would do it. And they called the Sylvia Sydney Stock Company. <laughs> I closed in one place, I rehearsed sure. another one right away. Um, and I said, sit down with that, you got to go to Hollywood. That's when I signed the stock company. And, uh, <laughs> Bill Brady said to me, you'll regret it. You should be playing the street seat. And I said, no, I don't pay any attention. The more pay attention you pay, the more I'll buy. Well, <laughs> that's all right, he's cute. And I went and dumped stock. <laughs> <laughs>
uh, Fox. Came back, went to see Street Scene. It was a big hit. Not bad. And um, that could have been me. Well, I just never thought a thing about it. So Paramount signed me, and it was before I did City Streets, I think. When Golden, I guess Golden knew about me or heard about me or whatever, I was loaned uh, to go for a street scene. <laughs> there were all these actors from New York that I knew from New sure. York. Was, Malky. was that filmed on location or was that a huge set? set? That's the most amazing set I've ever seen. I mean, we had very limited filming on that because the minute the light changed or something like that, we had to stop shooting. Sure. Sure. It looks like it's not so real. It was looking. a whole street, a whole street with the elevated and everything. That's amazing, because it, it, it goes on for blocks. It was on, no, not blocks, but it was on the back lot of United Artists. Wow. Well, it's, it's, it's in a very impressive set, and it... Well, I'll tell you something, this is something I don't understand, which I talked to you about the other day. Goldman was probably one of the best producers in Hollywood during that whole period. Hmm. Well, with... Oh, wait a minute, who's this dog? It must have been somebody else's dog. I never had a cop A stand-in. Stand yeah. <laughs> I like the record player. I had no idea. This must have been on location or something because it looks like a cabin. Yeah. yeah. Doesn't it? It does. Trails of the Lonesome Pine? I don't know, maybe. This I know with George Black Barnes. And hold on to those. Yeah, because he's a he was a very important photographer. Very. In the class with Stockton. Yeah. Here's old Sim. Oh. What was it wor like working with Jimmy Cagney? Oh. Really? Oh. One of the dearest men that ever lived. Uh, a girlfriend of mine from college moved to New York to be an actress, and she moved to Yorkville because she knew that Jimmy Cagney had grown up in Yorkville. And somehow she got his address, and she had a wonderful written correspondence with him for a while. Gee, not a bill was around. Bill Cagney, who was a producer. That was their first independent film after the war. Uh, uh, he was so protect protective of Jimmy. The, one of the dearest human beings that ever lived. Uh, Bill would call me in and say, you know that uh, yesterday you stole the scene from Jim. I said, who can steal the scene from Jim? Really? He said, only you. Because <laughs> he lets you. Right. Oh. <laughs> the kindest, gentlest human being. How do you suppose it is that so often these very kind gentlemen yeah, he needs help. Oh, I don't mind. I, no, no, no. I'll do it. I'll give him some biscuits and that'll shut him up. I'll be glad to do that for no, you. No, you don't know where they are. Okay. <laughs> it's easier for me to go and get them than give you directions. Okay. You shut up. You cut that out. You know where to go for it. You know where to go. That's right. Yeah, get it over here. It's too skinny for him. Mm -hmm. oh. So I make sure to throw it on his bed. <laughs> when you were in Hollywood, weren't you considered more of an actress than a movie star? I mean, I when I think I have no idea. When I think I, I think mostly they consider me a big schmuck. <laughs> no, how could they? How, how could they? You would you know, they're, they're, they're performers from periods that you see now and they still, see contempt they still seem contemporary. Clara Bow always seemed to me to be an actress who's, who's still, her acting was still fresh and contemporary, even seeing her silent films now. When I saw this movie last night... You, you don't know the story about me and Clara Bow. I guess I don't. Well, Mamoulian, who had been 
one of my teachers at the Theater Guild was brought to California to teach Clara Bow how to act. Mm -hmm. Because the minute they put a microphone in front of her, she had a nervous breakdown. Right. And Mamouni was working with her and working with her and working with her. I had come out to do American Tragedy. Yes. And thank God what happened happened. Otherwise, if I'd started working with Von Sternberg, I'd have jumped the contract too. Really? Anyway. Uh, they had a very late meeting one night because they were going to cancel the speech. Because he couldn't get her to handle dialogue. He worked with her and worked with her and finally he said the woman goes to pieces the minute she sees the microphone. Mm. That's awful. And they said, what the hell with it, we'll cancel the picture. And he said, I got it, there's a girl that just arrived in New York. He said, you let me have her, I'll give you a star. And he said, who will I have you? A kid by the name of Sylvia Sidney. And he said, oh no, she's going to do American Tragedy, she just cries a lot. <laughs> and he no, no. said, give me two, give her to me with this script and Cooper, and I will give you a movie star. And the next day, all I know is, in the middle of the night, they call this and the script, and I thought, it's happening again. I'm going to jump this contract to hell with it. Till I rip. The next day, I was supposed to go in for tests. Not tests for the contract, but tests for the movie. Right. Costumes sure. and hair and all. And I thought, I'm going to jump this damn thing to hell with it. And then I realized it was a movie. Mm. I said, oh, yeah, that's, you know, he'll carry me around like a baby, which he did. There wasn't a thing that that man didn't watch and say, that's exactly right. No, don't do that. Mm -hmm. Let me try this. Mm -hmm. He did the first moving shot that was ever done in a talking film. And everybody said, He's crazy. They can't, they can't, the mics, you know. Because the, the minute they had the mic set, sure. you were set. Right. And it's a scene in, uh, what the hell was the name of that? It's City Streets. Mm -hmm. Where I am running downstairs trying to grab Cooper and trying to stop him from leaving or something. And he had all these tracks spilled. And everybody said that. They were still putting the camera in a closed Watch. hut. He said, it won't work. It won't work. It's one of the most astonishing scenes for that day. Mm -hmm. With the camera moving and soundtrack and the whole thing. And lighting. And, oh, God. Well, I was amazed at, in street scene last night how much the camera moves in that. How very fluid the camera motion is going in all well, these different windows. Well, that was a movie director. That was King Vito. Have you read his book, um, A Cast of Killers? What? King Vito was trying, there was a, a very famous murder in Hollywood in the 20s. Um, William, William, not William Haynes. William Desmond Taylor. Taylor, yeah. William Desmond, Mayor Miles Minter. Minter. Yes. Well, King, Watch your, oh. King Vito um, set out in the 60s and 70s to try to solve the murder because it had never been solved. And he wrote, he investigated and he wrote a lot. What are you doing? I'm looking for more pictures. Oh. He investigated and found out who he thought committed the murder. But so many of the people were alive at the time that he wouldn't publish the book. After King Vidor died, an author had heard about King Vidor's investigating this murder and went through his house and found the manuscript under some floorboards, literally under some floorboards, and put everything together and came out with a book several years ago called The Cast of Killers, which actually explains, to my satisfaction, who committed the murder. And I think they, the, William Desmond Taylor. Yes, that, yes. Yeah. That it was... Um, not Mary Miles Minter, it was her mother who did it. And they put it all together and made it a very, very enjoyable, very believable 
scenario of what took place. And it also was a great deal about Hollywood in that period as well. <laughs> but it was a wonderful book. And um, <clears throat> it made, it, it had a great deal about who King Vidor was too. You got a very strong sense of his, his personality from the book. And he seemed like a really wonderful person in this book. Well. Very dedicated. I guess I don't know, because at that time all I knew was I was doing street scene and I did as I was told. Sure. And uh, <coughs> I don't remember any particular relationship with him, as I do with Hitchcock. Sure. Or um, Willie Wyler, people like that. What was your relationship with Hitchcock? Did you get along? I mean, I know he's very, very... He was very impressed with me. Well, I should have been. Yeah, I told you why. <clears throat> Didn't I? No, no. Well, I've been told. Oh, honestly, Malcolm, 